Hello, everybody. Long time no see. So, man, I have so much stuff to show you guys. So let me just say, it has been a very busy in my world and in my life. And, um, yeah, I just haven't been able to get on and make a video. And even though I don't look the way that I would have liked to have looked or what have you, I know I have blue roots and that is intentional. Um, I have just, every time I've had the time to do this, I'm like, oh, I'm going to make a video. And then I'm like, mm, I'll do it later because I don't feel like doing all the things that I should do to make it nice and professional. So today I thought, oh, I should make a video. And then I thought, mm, no, I don't want to. And I said, no, we're just going to make a video. Who cares? I have so much to share with you guys. I've started all the things. So I will start this by saying, and I did put it in the title, that this is going to be everything. This is all inclusive. This is knitting. This is crochet. This is cross stitch. We're having floss tube and yarn tube together, okay? So let me think. Let me think. What do I want to start? Well, I guess I'll start with what I'm wearing. Um, you may remember in a previous video, not too long ago, one of my most recent crochet or yarn videos, I had mentioned that I wanted to come up with a one skein uh, fingering weight crochet pattern for a scarf. And this is one that I just made up myself and I had intended to show you guys, but the shape isn't quite like I want it. Still playing with it. It should probably be blocked. It's a little wrinkly. But, it still is cute. And this was one skein of the Cascades Fingering Weight. I don't, I showed you guys this yarn before, but I don't remember. I don't have it right now, but it's just, uh, it fades through the whole skein. So yeah, I just, I started down here. And I think I cast on six stitches. Let me see where is the camera okay so I started off with six um, single crochets and what I did was every row I increased on one side which would have been this side so I did one increase and then at the end of the row I did a decrease and then going back I just did my stitches and did an increase. So it was increase and decrease one row, increase only on the next. Increase, decrease on one row, increase only on the next. And that's what gives this very slow growth for this kind of boomerang style shape, okay? And I did mine in moss stitch. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet, only in the spaces. So yeah, I just, Played around and did that not entirely in love with the shape because I really want this part between the here and here to be longer to make it just a little bit easier because it can be a little difficult to style it when it's that small of a bit right there so but I still love it I think it's pretty I like these colors this one is light enough. It can be worn in the summer and the spring and everything. So, yeah, it's cute. It's a cute little scarf. Anyways, I like it. I'm fine with it, but I'm hot right now, so I'm taking it off. <sighs> we are in this weird time. I just really don't feel like we got much winter at all. Very concerned about the bug population this summer. It's been like 75 80 degrees i think today it's only going to be in the 50s but it's still bright and sunny and it's not like winter and it hasn't been like winter at all i think we had about maybe two full weeks of winter here if we put it all together and it was very spaced out okay so the next thing that i work it on is a finish also i am not um usually i'm not a red heart girl a red heart super saver girl i should say there's some kinds of red heart yarns that i've enjoyed but super saver has really not been my favorite but i was at walmart last week and i saw this color and i was 
and love. I bought two skeins. This only used maybe, I don't know, not even half of one skein. So I've got plenty left to do something else with. I just wanted to get it on my needles right now. And I thought I could make something for my hair or one of these little, uh, I ended up making a, a Sophie scarf. So I don't know if you've seen those, but this color, I do not know that it's going to come through proper. It is called fuchsia, metallic fuchsia. It does have the little glittery strands running through it. I'm gonna try to, and on the camera, at least at what I'm seeing, those, those strands are looking silver. They're not, they are the same color as the yarn, which if it's coming through true, is a very beautiful, bright, electric fuchsia. It is so pretty. But yeah, this is the Sophie scarf and people wear them different ways. Some people just use them as like a little pop of color to zhuzh up an outfit. They're little. Um, I usually um, use mine as a hair tie. My hair looks really not good right now to try that. But if I have my hair up and I have my bangs pinned back, then I'll put on and just tie right here and have like a little headband thing. That was mine. But I just loved that color and I thought what a beautiful pop of amazing color this is. So yeah, I just made myself a little Sophie scarf. So I like it. I think it's cute and it like say if I'm wearing a lot of grays or neutrals or something and I just want to add a pop of color, I can grab this little guy and throw it on. So, there is that. And, let me see, let me see. This is something that I was thinking, oh, I'm going to make a shawl from one of my flower, um, yarn art flowers cakes. And so I started it as a shawl and then I got so far and changed my mind and decided I wanted to turn it into a cowl neck shawl or whatever you want, cowl neck scarf or I don't know. So I ended up, you know, started out as a triangle, took it all the way through, did my edging, connected it at the back and then started going around and around and around. And I'm going to keep adding rows because I want it to have a nice, cute little floppy collar. And what I love about this yarn is it's lightweight and you can easily um, give myself a little bit of room before I hang myself here. Um, you can wear this any time of the year. It's these yarn art cakes. They're a size one yarn. And yeah. So I will keep going because I want more. I want this to be more, probably double to triple what it is now. I think I was thinking 25 to 30 rows. It looks like I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 rows right now. So I'll probably take it to about 25 or 30 rows and that'll give me a nice big collar and it'll be a collar that if I want to, I can pull up over my head. Boy, that looks great. Right here. Look at that hair. Ooh. Anyway, um, so I've been playing with that crochet. And also, set this here. We're going to have so much stuff. I kept starting things. Like I said, it was this new start, new start. I just felt inspired to keep starting new things. I don't know that I worked on any old things. I think I just kept starting new stuff. I also started this scarf. I love this so much. I want to get it finished. I kind of wish maybe I can just rally tonight and have it finished because my husband and I are gonna go on a date and I was thinking how cute would this be to finish this. This is a crochet pattern. It is by Yarn Andy, I do believe. It is called, I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's spelled T-O-M-I-S. So we'll say Thomas, the Thomas shawl or the Thomas scarf by Yarn Andy. I will put a link below in the description box that you can just click and go right to her tutorial. It is a free pattern and I love the shape of this one. Okay, so 
You start here at the tippy tip and it has that nice built-in edge all the way. And of course it's not gonna lay great cause I'm not done making it. So I have not blocked it, but it comes around. And this one is gonna be more the exact shape that I want. So it will keep going and keep going until I run out of yarn. And when you bind off, I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna kind of set this here. When you bind off this last row or finish this, like if you're not binding it off, this is a crochet, not knit. But on the last row, you do like a little shell edge so that it matches this built-in edge. And it really does look gorgeous. Like say so you can see the completed version on her YouTube channel. It's a very easy pattern to memorize within just a few rows. You'll have it down pat. It is just a, it's a two row repeat, but it feels like a one row repeat because the only thing that changes is the start or the end, depending on if you're on row one or row two, but that's easy to see what you're supposed to do. You're just increasing on one end and decreasing on the other. And yeah, I am using, um, I like this yarn. This is a, comes in a little flat, like, ball cake type thing um, and obviously it's changing colors through there this is the knit picks chroma um, chroma fingering weight yarn it is a let me get it up here this is the kind of yarn that donna from donna loves yarn likes it is the single ply spun it has a little bit of a sheen to it this is wool, not acrylic. And other than the fact that this is wool, not acrylic, it is very much in keeping with, I believe it is. Boy, I really feel like this is wool, not acrylic. I've been wrong before. Anyways, what it most reminds me of is the Red Heart Boutique or Unforgettable, Unforgettable Boutique, whichever it is. Um, same kind of situation with this yarn but this is the colorway called I hate saying this because I need to refresh it should be pronounced if English was always pronounced the way it was spelled it, it should be lupine which is a flower lupine l-u-p-i-n-e but for some reason and it's probably just my Harry Potter supernatural werewolf and type interest I keep wanting to say lupin but I'm like, that would not have an E on it. Lupin doesn't have an E on the end. So, Lupine is the colorway. And it's very pretty. And I think it's going to look so cute. And I know here, for whatever reason, just lighting, I suppose, my baby blue roots look more like silver. But I think that'll look cute with my hair when I fix it. And it doesn't look so ratchety. Anyway. <laughs> um... So that is all, I think, let's make sure what's in this. Hold up. Nope, that's not all. See, I told you guys I was just doing all the things. And I have all my projects. I have literally drug everything that I keep going through around and around. I have it just piled over here. All my cross stitch, all my yarn projects just piled right here. And I have been working on like three or four different things a day because I got a new job. I'm so excited. This is like my dream job. It's everything, everything that I've been wanting. I just think I'm going to love it so much. Instead of just being stuck in the hospital, I'm going to have a big bunch of patients that are going to be my patients that I'm going to see in their homes um, doing ventilator management and, and just respiratory related um, care. Um, so I'm so excited about this and I will be leaving next week for a week. I get to go to Lafayette, Louisiana for or Lafayette, I guess that's how they say it, Lafayette, um, Louisiana for a week for training. And then I'll be back and I'll be working. I've been working PRN part-time for so long, so I've had very little shifts. And I've also had those 12 and a half hour long shifts at the hospital, just 
run you ragged some days and then die of boredom another day. You just never know what you're going to get. But this is just, it's going to be better. I'm not trying to bore you guys with everything. I'm just really excited to have this position and it's, it's going to be awesome. But because I knew that I was going to be on like a regular Monday through Friday, eight to five type of a schedule coming up. And I'm not just gonna be able to have just multiple days on end where I can just sit around and play with my craft. So I was like, I am taking advantage. I am sucking up all of the last bit of free time, nothing to do, nowhere to be that I can and just crafting my heart out. And that's exactly what I've been doing. So what is this? Oh, see, I almost forgot this. And this is so beautiful. And I cannot wait. Just takes a long time to knit one of these for me. Even though it's only one skein, it is knit and it is fingering weight yarn. And knitting fingering weight yarn takes some time. But this is, although we're close, look at, look, that's all that's left of this little cake. Ooh. And this is like half of one before. So I've gone through quite a bit. Anyways, um, that's all that's left. Once this yarn is gone, this guy's done. But it is, I showed you guys it before. I'm still working on it. Oh, I love it so much. Oh, this is my knit Linus shawl. So you start here. It's a one skein project. You get, because you know, um, for those of you that don't, knit and crochet. Crochet uses up a lot more yarn than knitting does for the same size of a project. So as you could see with my, this is the same way. Okay, watch out, Mr. Weasel. Sorry, my big fat orange cat has decided that my crocheting, this is one skein crocheted. And this is crocheted using a stitch that really does help the yarn go far. So we get something like this, and that's the whole skein. I used every last stinking bit of that. We still have a quite a bit of yarn to go on this one. And I've done solid. I've just done every 20 rows, I put in a row of eyelets. But this is where we are at so far, and this is quite a big quite, 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 I can't stretch it out. It's big. It's big, and we got a lot of yarn left to go still. So, anyway, this is my Linus shawl. I love it. I love this beautiful, this is so Eastery to me, so spring-like. Um, I know the color doesn't come through as well, and we're doing a lot of, uh, we've got a window right here, so it, it's kind of washing things out a little bit, but... It just has the most beautiful little sprinkles of pinks and purples and blues and yellows. And it's just really beautiful. It's unicorn horn is the colorway. And it is Hobby Lobby's, um, oh, what is it? Their yarn bee um, fingering. Wait, Hanks, their hand dyed, hand dyed Hanks that they have and unicorn horn, yeah. So that's that. And last but not least, I have added, started my second, yeah, here it is, I'm sorry guys. The Yarn Bee Authentic, authentic Hand Dyed in Unicorn Horn, that's the color of that. And last but not least, I did start my second color and we're, Fixing to get to where we're fixing to change it to the third color of my, oh Lord. Um, oh goodness, what is this? Andrea Mallory's fade, something fade. Eek, I forgot. I, this is not the first time you guys have seen this. Anyways, I'm fixing to start the third color. I've come, I've gone through the lace repeat and it's time for me to get my next skein and wind it up because basically you do a certain amount of rows of just stockinette or not stockinette, sorry, a certain amount of rows of garter, 
Then you do a lace section, and then you do a few more rows of the garter, and then you start the fade, where you just alternate back and forth between the new color and the old color. Then you just drop off the old color and continue with the new color. And so yeah, I'm ready to start with the next color. I don't know. I think, so I did the full amount of repeats of the lace section here. And on this one, I, cause I can't remember off the top of my head, but I feel like you do like the lace section, like let's pretend that it's four times. It's like 16 rows or eight rows. And then you do it four times total to get the whole lace section. On this next one, I did that. I, I only did it like three times instead of four. I think on the next one, I'm gonna do it like two times and then one time and then I'm gonna be done with the lace because I don't really like the lace. I don't know, maybe it'll look beautiful, but I'm just like, eh, we'll have a little bit on the shorter end because this thing is gonna get huge. And so this will be kind of the little decorative tail end that's sticking out. But as we go, I think I want that to that lace section to get progressively smaller until it's just gone. I'm so bad about changing patterns, guys. I always do that. But I don't know. I'm just not. I'm not loving the way that looks. But that, by gosh, is find your fade. I believe it's find your fade. Anyway. That's what I've been working on with yarns. Let me double check, but I believe this is the end of the yarn segment. Nope, <laughs> there's one more thing. One more thing, or two more things. Oh my gosh, you guys, I've been doing too much. This is crazy town, what's wrong with me? Okay, so. Bestin through mini stash. Oops, there's my needle on my hook. Anyways, been getting through that, the, all these mini skeins I've collected. And this is one of the projects that I'm using some mini skeins for. And doesn't look like much yet, but it will be super cute. So this is going to be a little top. I need to do a few, two or three more rows, I think. I don't know, actually, I might, this might be good enough. It's hard to tell until you put it on. That might be good enough. I think I'm about to the point where I'm gonna join this here. This is like the armpit, so what is this? This is just a big old square right now. Solid and granny. So I want the granny for the sleeves. Let's put it on my head. Yeah. I think we're ready to, yeah, I'm ready to join it. So I'll just, now that I've got e enough to come, plenty of room for my armpits. No one wants something stuck up in their armpits. So it's going to be able to go around my bust. And I'll just join these two now and leave the armholes open. And I will just continue going down. And then I think I'm going to put like, Maybe just a cap sleeve. I don't want this to be long sleeve. I want this to be one that I can wear in the, in the summer and spring and fall. And I can wear it in the winter even if I do a cap sleeve. So what I would do is I would, after, since that's gonna be the sleeve area, I would probably add, well, enough rows to get me, cause right now we're about here. So I'd probably add enough rows to get me to about there. And then what I think I'll do I think I'll knit. I think I'll pick up stitches and knit a ribbing. But I might do that with crochet. We'll see what we decide when we get there. But anyways, I think it's gonna be a really cute little top. So I'm gonna, I've been working on that. The other thing that I've been working on with scraps so after I did my advent, I had little ball, little scraps. Um, I also have, still have a lot more minis and I'm also, I'm fixing a restart. I had stopped it just for a month, but I think I'm gonna start it right back up. I don't know why I even stopped it. <laughs> Cause I felt like I had too many minis, but now I think, now that I'm using them on these two projects, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna need a lot more minis. So I need to restart it. 
Anyways, I'm using all my little scrap bits and pieces and I have to tell you, I would not think that I would love this project so much, but I find myself reaching for this project more than anything that I have over here. And as you can see, I have a lot of stuff to choose from sitting right here next to me. And this is the thing that I pick up the most because it is the easiest, most relaxing thing to do. And I can just watch TV. I can listen to audiobooks. I can be doing anything. It's easy to sit down, pick up, whatever. And I'm just on a roll with this bad boy. So this is, doesn't look like much, does it? This is Kay Jones Jelly Roll Blanket. And it is meant to use up scrap, mini skeins, whatever. See, like this is one whole mini skein right there. These are just bits and bobs. So I'm gonna alternate between bits and bobs and then throw in a whole one. And I don't need anything to match. Now this doesn't look like anything. This is a blanket. <laughs> Can you believe this is a blanket? And it's so cute when you're done with it. The idea is you cast on the number of stitches and you just are knitting. Knitting, knitting, knitting. So you've just got beautiful garter. Simple, which garter for a blanket is the best. It gives the squish that you want. This is Trilogy Yarns DK, which I find to be like a heavy fingering or a light DK. It's just a great weight. Um, she's using a fingering, but you can use any weight you want. She tells you, you know, do whatever, uh, use the hook size. I just happen to have this is what most of my scraps are in. So I'm using only the Trilogy DK yarns. So I don't have to worry about anything not matching up or looking well. Now, there's a few things I like about this. Number one, I saw somebody else do this. I wish I could remember who it was because I would give them the credit. I have joined yarn like this in the past. And in many projects, it doesn't look good. You can see it like on a garment. It doesn't look good. But on this, you can't even see it. You just can't even see it. What I do is when I'm ready to change color, I'll knit the first five stitches. Then I take my new color and I use both to knit 10 stitches. Then I drop my old color and just continue with my new color. So my ends are woven in as I go. And all I have to do when I'm done is I'm going to wash this once I get it completed. And once it's been washed, blocked, I don't trim these off until after I've done that because things can stretch and stuff and I don't want ends popping out. When I've done that, all I got to do is just go through and just clip those off. They're already woven in. Everything is great. So I don't have to go back and weave in any ends. The only end that I will have to weave in through this entire project will be where I cast on and where I cast off. So the idea of this pattern is you knit this strip as long as you want your blanket and then you bind off the end. Then you get your next ball of yarn, you cast on the stitches that you would, you knit across and on the very last stitch, you just connect it here. I mean, for crocheters, we'd slip stitch. It's not called a slip stitch here. And then you knit back across and then you come back and you connect the last stitch to this edge and you just keep going. So you're building, you're building this one strip at a time and there's no seaming at the end. So you're getting that traditional quilt, jelly roll quilt look, but you're making your fabric instead of using quilting squares or fabric. So anyways, I love this project. It is so fun. This is gonna be my airplane project. And look at these little things. Are these not the cutest? These are little needle stoppers, which I usually have, don't even have any because usually I'm working on circular needles and so I've got lots of stuff. Well, I didn't want to do this on a circular needle because ew, um, when I start connecting stuff, I just don't need, I don't need to. This is tiny enough that I don't need circular needles. And I also wasn't 100% positive about being able to take metal needles on the plane when I leave next week. So I just bought some of the Like, L-Y-K-K-E, Driftwood. I just bought a set of their double pointed needles and I saw these little adorable, they were on Amazon, little stoppers. I think it was like $10. 
And I don't know how many there are in this bag. Hmm. It's called Knitting Needle Stopper Point Something Sheep. It's a whole bag of like 20 of these bad boys. And you just can put them, well, they keep your stitches from sliding off, but driftwood doesn't really, you don't have to worry about that. More so with metal, do you have to worry about your stuff sliding off if, as long as you're not jostling it all over the place. But it's just got the little hole that you just stick it on the tip. Boop, boop. Now your stitches are locked on and you're also not stabbing through your bags, which I have done that plenty of time especially with like sock knitting needles, they're so tiny. And then you punch through your project bags. So anyways, I bought those because I thought they were cute. So if you just go on Amazon and type in sheep, whatever I just said, knitting needle stoppers, you can find them. I think they were like $10 for that big bag or something. They were not pricey at all. Okay, and now, for real, right? I gotta make sure. Okay, yes, for real now, this is the end of the yarn segment. And I'm going to try to put a timestamp down below. I probably should have said this at the beginning of this video, that people that maybe are cross stitchers and didn't want to see the yarn would have been able to click on that. Oops. Always hindsight's 2020. Okay, so, boy, I have such a big pile of stuff now. Okay. I'm glad you guys aren't here for the professional videography. I'm thirsty. I need to take a drink. I gotta have it. Okay. Oh, mucho better. Oh. Okay, guys. Wow. When I said that I was so excited, and I am still so excited. It just, this was something that I had an idea in my brain, and I don't know why I had this idea, because I've seen other people work on this project, and I know, I'm gonna set this somewhere else. Nobody touch that, cats, don't touch it. I know, I don't know, I know that I don't know. That is one thing I know for sure. Anyways, I've seen other people stitching these, these masterpiece amazing things. And I know that it takes them a long darn time to do it. But in my mind, I was like, it's not gonna take that long. It's not that big of a deal. I was wrong. I will admit that I was wrong. And probably if I was a monogamous stitcher and crafter in general, if I wasn't doing four different darn crafts at a time, with 27 projects each, maybe, maybe this would be an attainable goal. My mind said you can do one thing a month and have this done in one year. And then reality said, ha, 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 ha. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about my A Year at Hawk Run Hollow. And what I wanted to do was to stitch the month in the month that it was. So, because I did not get this until the end of January, the first thing I did was stitch my two first two black squares, and then I started on February. And the goal was to finish February by the end of February, and then on March 1st, start on March, and then do April and May, and just do that. And I just thought that's gonna be great. And oh my gosh, some of these, I'm looking, holy crow, look at December. December is the straight up, the whole, that is full coverage. That one is a full cover. Anyway, okay, I don't know what I was thinking. I was wrong. I admit it. But I am still happy with the amount of progress that I did make. So I'm going to show you guys where I'm at. February. You guys, listen. That heart is a whole mood. 
That is a billion stitches in that heart. That is full coverage heart. <laughs> I'm still working on it. So everything on this is done except for filling in that heart. And then I have a few little snow puddles. I need to put a snow puddle under that bottom tree. I need to put a snow puddle under that fire, which that's just going to take. I can get that done in 30 minutes each. And then there's a couple little snowflakes that I got left. I got one above the, I got, so I got a couple in there already, as you can see. I got the ones on that side. I just have a few more on that side. So outside of this heart, less than an hour of work. But this heart, I mean, I've spent days on this heart so far. It's a trudge getting through this full coverage heart. I don't know. This is 20 count. This is 20 count Ada. So this would be the same as stitching on 40 count. You're filling in all that. It's a lot. It's a lot. But I'm going to finish it. I'm going to get her done. And I'm going to move on to... Hopefully, I'll have her done <laughs> by the time... Well, we might not get that done in March. We might be just jumping around doing whatever season we are in by the time we finish the last one we started. We might be working on like a a June square, and then by the time we finish that, it might be time to do Christmas. I don't know. We'll see what happens. This is, this is a lot of work, but these are so cute. They are cute. I want to do them all, but it'd probably take me a lifetime to do all of them. So... That one technically wasn't a new, I mean, it was a new start because I just started it in February. The other thing that I had showed you guys that I started in February, oh, I love this so much, I love it so much. Hold up, where's the, I'm gonna be able to show pictures. Is it this one? Yeah. This is Heartstring Samplery's Scary Sampler. Sorry about the lighting, guys. I just love this guy so much. Oh my gosh, it's such a wonderful, beautiful thing to stitch on. I am stitching it on. I don't know if I've lost my darn. No, I didn't. I'm trying to get into a habit of taking my stickers off my fabrics and sticking them on my pattern cover. Oh, did I already? No, I still have it. This is a 32 count Platinum Lugana. Sorry, I need to put this back on because I will straight up lose this bad boy if I don't. Okay, so yeah, 32 count, which is what was called for. I'm doing one over two, and this is almost a full page. Can you believe it? Um, I know it, I will get through, I mean, as soon as I, I'm just filling in the words that are right here, and that's a full page, one page down. I love these little demigorgons and the alien head seed pods. I'm living for those, okay? I'm excited, this border is awesome. This is gonna be one big boy. This is a big boy. So much bigger than it looks when you look at it in the picture. <laughs> so I've done, what do we got? Just that little bit right there in that corner. I will die and that's where, <laughs> that's where that page ends. So I think this is a nine or 12 page, I don't remember. It's big, it's gonna be real big. Um, but I love stitching on it. I love this. I am doing this in the called for um, over dyed threads, um, which are a combination of Weeks Dye Works, The Gentle Art, and Classic Color Works. So they do also list a conversion to DMC. And if I had been in the store, I ordered these on. I ordered all this online from One Two Three Stitch, which is my go-to. If I had been in the Silver Needle, let's say, I probably would have converted some of those flosses to DMC because 
I don't really see a big point. The only reason that I get excited about the overdyes is if they're very have some kind of variegated like that's going to show up to the eye. If they're just solid, I'm just thinking why spend four times? Might as well just get the DMC because and I would have done that because there are some of these that really don't have like obviously the collards, I feel like that's important. I, I don't feel like I could have gotten away without that because that green shows up a lot in here and it does have good variegation. Um, but, but others are just kind of solid and I don't know. I think you could just convert this to the DMCs and I think it would still be gorgeous, of course. But if I was going to keep one fancy color or over dyed, I'd keep that collards. Because there's a lot, of, there's a lot of grass that you are stitching. I don't know what that other green color is for the grass, but that seems important too. And I also love this limey green, but you, I don't know. Boy, do what you want. <laughs> that's what, that's what it is. Okay, so that is the scary sampler. Let's put this back in. Now, I've also picked up an oldie bit of giddy because I just thought about this the other day and I was like, I need to finish this. And unfortunately, I apologize because I grabbed my pattern and forgot that I had taken the darn picture off. This is Nora Corbett Electra. I've showed you guys this before. And in my mind, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm just basically done with this. All I have to do is beat it. There's like nothing left. And then I started and realize there's a lot more left than I thought there was because this dress has a ton of variegation in it. So it's taking some time, but I'm just trying to get through this dress. The moon is stitched in full. So everything is done except for just filling in this dress and then I can do the beading and then she will be finished and she is beautiful. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love her. I think she is so pretty. I would I don't know if I'll have her done in time to be on the wall for the Halloween season this year. But, I mean, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. And she's beautiful. I love her. And I love this needle minder. I believe all my good needle minders that I love so much come from... I feel like it's mad... Is it Mad Hatter Minders or Mad For Minders? I know there's a Mad For Minders. I just can't remember if this is it. But it's on Etsy. And I love these. They're wood. And they have really great magnets. Good, good, good earth magnets. And stuff just does not fall off. And I don't know about you, but when I'm stitching, I tend to put my needles on the front. But when I'm done stitching, I put them on the back because they don't... This is indented back here. I don't know. That's just what I do. Um, but they don't, I haven't lost a needle. I haven't had a needle fall off of these magnets, no matter how much, how crazy in bags pulling in and out. They don't, they're good. They're strong. I highly recommend it. Um, and they have so many cute ones. Like this one is from The Raven. It says Nevermore, which I just felt was really cute for the spooky sampler or the scary sampler. Sorry. Anyway. And this toad, this frog, I guess this is a frog. This frog for her is perfect in my opinion. Okay, the next thing I started, that's my threads for, I will tell you what, man, I've got to get a hold of, she has changed her name. It was so my roots, am I like Michigan? Let's just erase this. I'm not a geography person. Anyways, I love her little floss keeper things. Put a magnet in them right there, which holds on to this. And it also can hold on to your scissors. You just lay your floss in there. It's like on that felted material. And you just snap it closed and your floss isn't getting tangled and messed up everywhere. I love these. Anyway. Hi, Lucy. <gasps> Oh, uh, did you want to come over and say hello? My sweet, 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 oh, she's leaving us. 
one of my foster, all my fosters have gone. But the day that I was taking my five little foster kittens that you guys were seeing up to PetSmart, I got a call from one of the ladies, um, one of the volunteers uh, from the shelter, or it's not a shelter, it's a rescue that I'm volunteer with, that told me that one of my prior rescue babies had been returned. And she had been returned in a very poor state of health. And would I consider bringing her back home and fostering her while she received medical treatment so that she could be adopted again? And I said, absolutely, because this kitten, guys, this baby showed up, a gentleman that was mowing yards in my neighborhood about ran her over. He showed up at my door. He was practically crying. This kitten looked awful. Her tail was mangled, which we later found out it had been burnt. Um, her eyes were completely melded shut. She was just, she had a terrible upper respiratory infection. She was so malnourished. She weighed, I think she weighed 180 grams. I feel like 180 grams, but she had all her teeth, which meant that she was at least five weeks old. So she was weighing almost the amount of a newborn kitten at five weeks old. And if you've ever had any experience with kittens, you know that there's a huge difference between newborn and five weeks. I mean, they do a lot of growing. I mean, like little regular human babies grow a lot in that time, but little bitty kittens grow a whole lot in that time. Anyways, she was the sickest and she had this, it took them a while to diagnose what it was. So it lasted so much longer than I wish it would have ever, but she had like dysentery, just water pouring out of her little bottom 24 seven. So she couldn't run around with the other kittens and play and have a good time because she was just always leaking and it was so terrible. And she had so much medication that she had to be on. I have really just fallen off this. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to zip through this. Anyways, we worked together and she was healed. We were so happy and she's so precious to me. She was the hardest foster it was ever for me to give up. And I, I think Kitten Lady calls them like death cats or something. They're the ones that they're just on the verge of death. And you bond so intently with them when you are just the one that's trying to help them to live <laughs> and for her to go out get adopted and I was so happy for her because like I say I didn't want to give her up I wanted to keep her but I was like you can't have all the cats you got to be able to let them go out to let more come in to help anyway to find that she had not been treated proper and she came back and the things that the people said why they were returning her, they were kind of goofy about it. They're like, do we need to, um, will you take her back or do we just need to take her to a shelter? No, please bring her back. Actually, you signed a contract stating that if you didn't want the animal anymore, you would not give it away or surrender it. You would bring it back to us. So, yeah, let's just stick with what the contract said. <laughs> anyway, her eyes. I don't know what happened, but she should have been taken to a vet at some point because her third eyelids, what the vet thought when we took her to the vet the first time, he thought that her third eyelids had melded to her eyeballs. So she looked blind um, because those inner corner eyelids they have that come out were almost fully covering her pupil. They were covering her pupils and everything, but she could kind of see a little bit. But they were worried that she was going to need surgery to correct that. She is on three different eye drops that I have to give her twice a day. And I can't just like drop, 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 drop while fighting with her because she's not about that. You have to wait five minutes in between each of the drops too. So it's like... It takes us like 30 minutes to get all these drops because she gets so out of sorts and so upset by the time we get the first drops in her eyes, I have to give her a break. 
obviously for at least five minutes. Usually we do it more like 10 and then we gotta do it again. And then we have to do it again at night. And just do that for 30 days. That's like 180 doses of eye drops for this poor cat. Her eyes are looking better though. It does not appear that they are stuck because they are retracting finally and looking better, but they still don't look great. Anyway, she's so cute. She's my baby. I don't know, I might adopt her. I just don't think I can trust other people any with this. Okay, next up. Because I knew that I was going on the airplane and I wanted to have, and vacation, I wanted to have at least one yarn project, which I'm gonna take the jelly roll blanket. And I wanted to have one um, cross stitch. And I don't know what I thought, but I thought, oh, I need it to be something little. I want something small, which makes great sense. But I didn't think it all through. So I saw this and I thought, oh my gosh, this is the cutest thing in the whole wide world. I love it so much. And it's little. It's literally so little and so cute. But it's not the right project, but I'll show you why in a minute. So this is an ink circles assembly required. These little skeleton bones. His bones are all laid out. And it's so cute to me. And I love that variegate. It's just one color of floss. So I thought that's what I need. The only problem with this one is, is that it is on linen. I didn't think about that part. And not only is it on linen, it's on a dark colored linen. Not a good travel project. Not for me anyways, but it's so cute. And I have the tiniest little start on it. Enough to realize real quick that this wasn't gonna work as my travel project. But this one is being done on a 30 count dolphin linen fabric by Weeks Dye Works. And that's what I've got done. A little bit of his little upper rib cage, a little, just a little sternum area there. It's cute. It's gonna be real, real, real cute. It's just not gonna travel with me on the airplane. And there's another one of those. I love these needle minders. So cute from the same place. I think it's Mad for Minders. I believe that's what it's called. So there's that. Something else I wanna show you guys. On Amazon, I came across some bags. Now, I think we're all pretty familiar with these style bags off of Amazon. You get like 12 pack, very cheap. Got the zipper. Every once in a while you come across one that the zipper don't work, so it's trash, but they're cheap enough to where it doesn't really matter. And they're like a plastic with a canvas stuff, right? Well, I came across these and I was like, I'm gonna give them a shot. And I am so glad that I did because these are awesome. I love them. I highly recommend them. These are truly canvas bags with handles. Real canvas. They have mesh. Instead of plastic here, they have mesh. So you don't have to worry as much about that sticking if you have ink. I've been putting my floss and my fabrics in the front pocket. Or if it's just one floss, but if it's multiple flosses. Let's see, I've got them. There's my floss. Anyways, if it's multiple flosses, I've been putting them inside the bag bag. But you got a real good area in here. Perfecto. And it is waterproof material inside. So, you've got everything you need. You've got your handles. You've got this great little setup here. I think this was, I either got a six pack, I, I feel like it was an eight pack, but it's a six pack or an eight pack and $19.99. That is a great price for real. Like I said, this is canvas. This is not, and it's sturdy, good canvas. It's not like that grocery bag canvas that could rip. It's real, actual, heavy duty, waterproof lining, mesh, zippered front. Love these. Either six pack or eight pack for $19.99 at Walmart or at Amazon. Okay, so after I realized that that project wasn't going to work, then I thought, okay, I'm going to go with a different project. So let me find something else that's 
smaller and that I could be able to do. And I've changed my mind on this one too. There's nothing really all that hard about it. I just, it's just a little bit bigger than what I wanted to bring with. And I just changed my mind. This isn't what I want for my travel project either. But it is a really cool pattern. This is Ink Circles Elemental Dragon Fire. And they have, of course, uh, all the different um, elements. Water. I'm a fire sign, so I'm a Sagittarius. So I wanted to do the fire dragon. And it is the year of the dragon. So there's my year of the dragon covered. And I'm doing it. I did, I don't know what... This is the first time this has happened to me. But you know, on one, two, three stitch, you can just add to cart. Like if you find a pattern you want, you don't have the floss or whatever, you can just add it to cart. Cause it only required one floss and it was a silk. And I was like, sure, just add to cart because I didn't have any silk. And I was like, that'll be fine. I haven't stitched with silk yet. So I did it and it came in and I realized it, I only ordered one skein. Usually, it will automatically put, I don't know what happened, but usually it'll put how many ever skeins you need. Well, this required three skeins and I only had one and I didn't want to go back and order two more skeins. And it was just a deep red silk. And I was like, well, I've got plenty of my stuff that I like so much. My 115 variegated red DMC that I love. I've always got plenty of that. So I was like, I'm just gonna use that and I'll save this one skein of silk for a smaller, a true small, because this is not a true small. Um, so yeah, anyway, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. So I have started, see this is what I say, this is not a true small, this is, that is what I've gotten to. Not very much. <laughs> But it's going to be so pretty. Do you see how beautiful that is? Oh, it's so pretty. And this is, I believe, I believe, I believe, it's a fiber on a whim. 18 count Edo at Bogado. This was actually what I had purchased for my scary sampler. I was going to do it on 18 count Ada which it, the model was stitched on 32, but I was like, well, I'll make it a little bit smaller because it's so big. So I went with 18, because I love 18 count Ada for stitching. I can see it good enough and you still get teeny tiny little stitches because it's like working on 36 count linen. Anyway, I didn't realize the scary sampler had a small section where it was one over one. So I needed to do it. I just went on and did the, the 32 count, so because there was not going to be any way I was going to be able to duplicate that on an 18 count Ada. Maybe if you had like a 10 or 11 count Ada, maybe you could get in a quarter stitch, but not on 18 count Ada. So anyways, I repurposed this for my dragon. So there we go. New, 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 all the new. We love the new starts, apparently. So, still on the lookout, I was, and hopefully will no longer be. Um, oh, it's another one of my needle minders with the mushies. How cute is that one? So cute. Um, and another one of the bags. These bags are great. Um, ever still on the hunt for the perfect travel project. I placed an order. I placed another order, guys, at 123 Stitch. Why don't I just show you guys what I got? Let's look. I ordered two things because I really feel like one of them is going to be the exact right. What? already picked this. I'm sorry. I got distracted by Tractor Supply telling me not to forget to pick up my stuff that my husband picked up yesterday. Weird. Okay, anyways. um, Let's see. One, two, three, stitch. My one, two, three, stitch order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me the order. 
No, that's not to order. That's telling me they shipped it. I love them. They ship so fast. It's so great. Okay. Um, let's try this one. Ugh. Okay. I will just go. I got Paisley Cat cross stitch, and these were kits that were on sale. Um, for fairly cheap. Well, one of them was really cheap. It was seven dollars and fifty cents for the whole kit. It is a small, but let me just go. I thought that I could. I thought it would show it on the email, but it doesn't. It's just showing the. The words. So I'm going to show you guys. This is a, how big is this one? Five by seven is the finished size. So not tiny, tiny, still sizable. But $7.49 for the whole kit. Comes with the fabric and it's done on a 14 count. Ada, which I think will be very easy to stitch on, on the plane. And it's small enough to fit in my little eight by eight hoop. Yeah, I think this will be, this is probably going to be the winner. But it's called Paisley Cat. And that is what it looks like. Be your own kind of beautiful. And I just think that's adorable. I think that's going to be the one. I think that's going to be the one that I take on the plane. The other one that I purchased, oh, that scared me, is... It's not big by any stretch of the imagination, but it is bigger than this one. That one is five by seven. And this one is a 10 by 10. I don't know that I will take this one with me, but when I saw this, I was just like, this is so beautiful. This is called Fox. It's um, the whole kit by Design Works. It is also on a 14 count Ada, which is why I thought it'd be really easy to take. Um, oh, it's so beautiful. My heart, guys, my heart. This one was a lot more than the other one, but the other one was so ridiculously cheap. So the other one was a five by seven, um, seven dollars and fifty cents. This one is the pattern, the floss, the fabric, 10 by 10, $26.98. Still pretty cheap for the whole everything you need. But this is so beautiful. I think those flowers are divine. They look like little watercolor flowers to me. I think this is such an adorable. I think this will be lovely to stitch. That is what I think. And I am looking forward to getting that in. So they're both supposed to arrive on Monday. Today is Friday. I purchased them on Wednesday night at like 10. They shipped out yesterday and they'll be here. Or they, they, I got my shipping notification yesterday. They got to the post office last night. They arrived and then this morning they were on the road. And I will probably have it tomorrow. It always tells me that I'm going to get them. A day after I'm gonna actually get them because it's usually just a one full ship day because they are located in Texas and I am in Oklahoma and it was in like Copal, Texas at like four o'clock this morning so I expect it'll be delivered tomorrow I hope and if so that I'm gonna get both of those started up and I can't wait I'm so excited <laughs> Like, I just need one more thing to start, you guys. My whips are growing, and that's the opposite of what I said I was going to do. But I have just been getting so much joy out of starting new things right now. I'm just in that, I think many of us go through stages of where we just want to buckle down and just finish some things, and we don't want to start anything new. And then there's other times when we just want to only start new stuff. Like, literally, I am still on the hunt for the exact right fabric for my um, woodland or yeah, woodland cathedral goddess or whatever, my mirabilia, because I have stolen the fabric. The what I'm stitching the 32 count platinum Lugana that I'm stitching Scary Sampler on was originally purchased for her, 
and I stole it and that was fine because after I purchased it I found out that I shot probably should have gotten 28 count instead because from everything I've heard everyone says that trying to bead the 32 count is not a fun time and that it's way better on the 28 count the beads lay more appropriately and then I was seeing my eyes have just not been a friend to me lately um one of my most favorite projects that I love working on is my Lila Studio Halloween Quaker. But I am doing that on the, it's either called for fabric. It's either 40 or 42 count linen. And it's on like a murky or something. It's a darker colorway. I love that project so much, but it is really difficult to work on that for me. I have got to get to the eye doctor and get a new prescription or something. This something is askew. Um, but that being said, you know, I was really all about 40 count even weaves. I prefer over linens just because they, that makes it a lot easier. Um, or 20 count Ada's. Um, and I'm picky about my Ada. Like I like a, like a, um, a Zweiger Ada where it's nice and soft and more like fabric instead of plastic. I don't like the Walmart plastic Ada. Like, ugh, I hate that. But I'm finding that I'm now I'm really just like 18 count, 18 count Ada. That's what I really want. Good hand dyed 18 count Ada. And hmm, 16 count Ada is not bad either. That's really not that bad. That's actually a little easier to see, especially on darker stuff. So my choice of fabrics is changing because of my eyes. I would love to be the lady that could just stitch on 40 and 50 two count or whatever. <laughs> These crazy linen. I, I would love it. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful, but my eyeballs cannot take it. Um, before I was 20 count, I, was, I loved 25 count. 25 count even weave over one the best but now I have to make sure I can't do that in the evenings that's morning stitching near the window with the alt light like ev all the things and I found that my alt light is really aggravating my eyes I don't know if it's the light or just my eyes I do have dry eyes like the actual medical condition dry eyes but I know that my eyes, when that light lamp is on, I'm trying not to use that lamp unless I absolutely have to. Because with that lamp on and me looking and trying to focus, my eyes get fatigued so fast and then it's just burning, watering, hurting. Just awful, so bad. So if I can keep that light off, I can go for a lot longer. Hence, I need better count. Hey, oh no! Stop it, what's happening? Why are you being mean? Oh my gosh. Anyways, you guys, it's been over an hour. I know that this is not gonna be a fancy video. Once I get my job started and I'm past all this, oh, that reminds me. Oh, I keep thinking I'm done, but I'm not done. There's a lot of things that you have to do to start a new job. You have to get a bunch of tests done. You gotta fill out four billion kinds of paperwork and turn in documents and get records and background checks and labs and who knows what. I have got to go and get a new TB test. Ugh, forgot about that. It's literally the last thing I think that I have got to do and get done so that they have that before I leave next week. They're gonna be mad at me if I don't have my stuff done. They've already paid, I've already got my plane tickets and stuff. That wasn't cheap. Um, I mean, they paid for it. <laughs> I don't think they'd be very happy if I don't meet my end of the bargains by getting all my paperwork and stuff done. Anyways, once I am back from training and then I'm on, I know that there'll be another week or two where I'm doing additional training with, um, the girl that I'm taking over her area, her territory for, and some of the other lady, the kind of supervisor lady, I know I'll do some time with her, and then I'll get to 
meet all my patients that are my patients um, and start doing this doing this new whole new job this whole new life that I'm so excited to start um, and I have like worked out how my life is going to be because I mean I have to kind of organize to be able to make sure I'm seeing all my patients and the amount we have to have a home visit with them every 90 days so I will have to be responsible for coordinating and making sure that I see all like 50 of my patients in a rotation that makes it to where I see everybody over the 90 day period. Mm. Anyways, that being said, your schedule is somewhat flexible so you can kind of play and maneuver things in the way that makes it easiest for you. So I probably, what I would like to do is at least have one a month one video a month where I can show you guys everything I've been working on. I don't think I'm going to be able to work on enough stuff on a weekly or bi-weekly to have much content for a video. I just, definitely not weekly, there's no way, um, but bi-weekly even, I would be concerned that it would just be very small little videos. And if we're going to, if we're going to go to all this effort, <laughs> to record a video, you guys are going to want to see some things, right? Um, so yeah, um, my hope is that a once a month check-in for what I'm working on, what I finished. Hopefully there'll be FOs in there. Let's get some FOs. So anyways, I really appreciate you guys for watching. Um, I appreciate all your lovely comments and your likes and your subscribes. And I hope that each of you have a really great day and month and this whole darn year. I feel like it's going to be the best one yet. So take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.